it's Jillian here, the Artistic Associate at TheaterWorks USA and your virtual teaching artist. Today, we're going to take an underwater look at how to make and bring a puppet to life. In TheaterWorks USA's The Pout Pout Fish Musical, the story is told using beautiful large puppets designed by Matt Atchison and Fergus Walsh of Atchison and Walsh Studios. Today, they're going to take you inside the world of puppet design and teach you how to make and bring to life your very own puppets. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Matt Atchison, and this is Issa Atchison. And I was one of the co-creators of the Pout Pout Fish musical uh, by Theater Works USA, which you should go check out as soon as you can. But today... Um, we are going to teach you how to make one of these crazy octopus puppins and follow along in our, in our footsteps. Okay, so these are the materials you're going to need to make this lovely octopus puppet that we're going to make together today. One of the first materials you'll need is some aluminum foil. Hopefully you have that in your kitchen. Uh, if you don't have aluminum foil, you can also use paper, but we're gonna use aluminum foil. Um, some wooden dowels. I found these at Target. Uh, if you don't have these, kitchen skewers work well. If you don't have those, you can cut up lengths of old wire hanger. Um, I also found this Crayola model, model Magic. It's a soft, flexible, air dry foam material we can use. You'll need some masking tape some twine, a rubber band. Uh, this is fishing line. If you don't have fishing line, you can use a nice strong bit of string. Any kind of string will work and we'll show you what we'll do with that later. And then we're also gonna use very quickly uh, a glue gun and some glue sticks and a pair of scissors. So, step one, we're gonna make the head of the octopus. We're gonna make that primarily out of balling up some aluminum foil. You don't want to squeeze it too tight and you also don't want it to be too loose. You want to make it a little bulbous on top and then go ahead and squish it on the table so you have a little bit of a flat bit on the bottom. Then you're going to take your wooden dowel and you're going to use your pair of scissors very carefully. Pop a little hole in the top of the aluminum foil. You're going to take your dowel and you're gonna stick it in there, squeeze it a little bit. Let's put it down like that. Then you're gonna take your hot glue gun and put just a little dab of glue around the top of the skewer. See what I'm doing there? I like to then twist the skewer up and down to get the glue kind of inside a little bit and then you let it set. So we'll just put that aside for one second and let the glue dry. So this next step, we're gonna put um, the twine, just ordinary kitchen twine. You're gonna cut um, four pieces about this long, about, I don't know, 20 inches maybe. It can be, it doesn't have to be exact, but they should all be the same size. So I'm gonna cut one, I'm gonna stretch it out, find the next length. Two, stretch that out, the next bit, that's three, and four. Whoops, a little knot happens there. Four. So now we've got our four pieces of twine. Whoop, they'll do that for you. One, two, three, and four. Now, with the masking tape, what we're going to do is just do a little press. You're going to cut, tear off some pieces like that, and just hang them over your table. This will come in handy because you're going to have your hands busy in a second, and to have these already ripped and ready to go just makes life a lot easier for you. So, I'm going to do, I don't know, it's better to have more than less, so I'm going to do maybe six of them. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five. And last one. 
six. Okay, now that we've done that, we're gonna go back to our foil. We're gonna just make sure the, the sculpt is rough and just kind of the general shape. I kind of like to make this octopus where it's a little bit narrower at the bottom and there's a little bit of a bulge at the top of the head. And you can do this when we put the clay on too to make it more of a shape that you want. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is find the center of the string. So take both ends, pull it tight. That's where your center is gonna be. You're gonna drape it over the aluminum foil right there, right there. So it's going over and across. And then you'll have the two strings hanging out. You can, it almost already looks like a little bit like an octopus. Then, by holding it with those two hands, you're gonna grab the piece of tape that you had on the table. You're gonna just fasten it very gently to the foil. This will just hold your twine in place. The twine is basically the legs of the octopus. So, then you'll just do that four more times. You'll find the center again. Found the center. I'm gonna make an X. So you see there's an X with the twine right next to that little wooden post. And then the same thing, just kind of bring the legs down. It's gonna be a little annoying that the twine tangles up on you, but that's okay. Just hold it there. Then again, pinch it to the sides, grab your piece of tape, and go ahead and tape it over again. Actually, sorry, I'm going to tape it a little bit lower to the base of the head. This will help keep the legs spaced in the right spot for when you go to sculpt the legs on later. So right now, we've got a four-legged octopus, which we're almost there. Most octopuses have seven tentacles. In our show, The Pout Pout Fish, our octopus only has seven. His name is Lucky Mr. Seven. It's a whole nother story on how he lost that tentacle. You'll have to find out later. I'm gonna put another piece on. I'm gonna make, so you have your cross and you're basically gonna put another one that crosses that cross in half. I hope that makes sense, but maybe the visual will be better. Take the legs down. Now, at this point, you wanna make sure there's a nice space between the between the tentacles. So there's one here, there's one here, there's one there, right? Good. So you're gonna hold it back down again at the base. Yet another piece of tape. Tape those in place. Be sure to navigate around the twine. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a little annoying sometimes, but that's just all part of making puppets. All right, so now we have six legs. I'm gonna put on my last pair for eight. And again, find the center, wonderful. Then we're gonna cross that cross in half again. So lay it over the foil, pull it down to the sides. This is roughly what it should look like from the top. Then we'll go down, hold it in place, find that piece of tape again. And, oops, tape that around. I missed it. It came out of its tape. So put that over there, tape it up. Sorry, we'll hold that one there. We'll grab just another small piece of tape and put it in place. So, this is what we have at this point. We've got the aluminum foil ball, with the dowel in it, and the legs taped around. So now we're gonna put the clay, the model magic, on top of this form. So what you do, go ahead and cut it open. Pull out a nice big chunk and you're gonna start kneading it. You're gonna squish it, squish it out, maybe roll it around a little bit. Who knows how long it's been sitting in that package. You wanna wake it up a little bit. 
So I'm squishing out kind of a nice flat piece, maybe that thick, just kind of squishing it out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to lay it on top of the foam, on top of the a foil, excuse me. And then you just start working it around, squishing it down, squishing it around. And at this point, you can make whatever shape you want on top of the form. If you want it to be a really big head, go for it. Um, I use the foil in here also. This, this stuff goes, goes pretty quick, so you don't want to have it to be solid foam. The foil helps take up some space. I put the foam, the foam on so far there. I'm going to squish up another piece and just lay it on top. And then slowly work around. You can squish it in there. You can use whatever color you want. This just happened to be blue. It's what they had at Target. And I was like, hey, a blue octopus would be cool. So let's do blue. You can hide the seams by gently just kind of pushing and, and massaging it into the foam. If any cracks like that happen, no big deal. Just go back up, pinch it a little bit, and smooth it down. So remember, take it out, squish it thin, roll it around a little bit, wake it up. Now, when you come down to the legs, you're going to want to make sure they have, you know, you can move them around on the tape a little bit, but you see there's a nice little space between the legs. So I'm going to go ahead and put the foam in there and sculpt around the twine. So you've got one point there sticking out. We've got another point there sticking out and go ahead and cover the rest of your foam. Sorry, rest of the foil. The biggest challenge is always keeping the twine out of your way. There's another little piece. You can take as much or as little of this sculpting compound as you need and go ahead and work it around and space it out. And you'll do this technique until you cover the whole, the whole piece. Okay, so I've gone ahead and covered the whole um, foil structure with the, with the blue modeling compound. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is just go around again and be, you can move these around a little bit at any time. It's very forgiving. Nothing has to be perfect. It's your version of an octopus, so make it how, however you want it to look. But so now I have it kind of nicely spaced out. It's not perfect at all, but these are the spaces. So these will be the tentacles that we'll do later. I've covered the whole top bit of the foil with the blue, blue modeling compound. You can smooth it out. You can add whatever features you want right now. I'm going to, at this point, we're going to make some eyes for the octopus. So I have some white model magic, same stuff, just white. I'm going to pinch off, I don't know, maybe a pea size amount of white, roll it into a little ball. We're going to give him some nice beady eyes. Then you'll make, pull off a little bit extra of another bit. Try to get it roughly the same size. Again, there's no need to be perfect. It'll be a nice character flaw, however these eyes are. Then I'm deciding that this is going to be the front of my octopus. I like where these tentacles are. I'm going to hold up and I think I want the eyes to be right there. So I'm going to go ahead and stick one on. I'm going to go ahead and stick the other one on. And those are the basic eyes. Now if we want to get just a little bit fancier, you can go ahead and take the blue again. Squish out a nice thin layer thin layer of it. I don't know. looks a little bit like that. Then I'm going to put it over the eyeballs like that and make the top lid. And then you squish the top bit in there. Da -da -da. Looks a little funny right there already. Then I'll do another one on the other side. 
Squish out again a nice flat thing, kind of in a triangle shape, doesn't really matter. And just try to match the curve that you did on the other eyes. So then I'm just working it into the body, just kind of feathering it out. You can use your thumbnail if you want and go in there and kind of clean that edge up. There's a ton of wonderful sculpting tools out there. If you find that you like sculpting, there's a lot of tools that'll help you with this. But today we're just going to use our hands. They're good tools too. And we'll do the bottom. Same kind of thing. Just kind of curve it up. Yeah, that's, that's what that one's going to look like. That's his eyeball. Is it a he or a she? I don't know. Make that just a little bit smaller. Same kind of thing. There we go. So those are the eyeballs with eyelids. Now, if we want to get extra fancy, we'll take a little bit of the blue, just a little bit, maybe that big, right? Make a little ball, grab another bit, make another ball. Now, with this ball, very gently, You'll put it in the center of the eyeball and then very gently you can squish it down. You can flatten it out and you've made a pupil. Take the other one. The hardest part is finding the center of the eye. Sometimes it'll look a little crazy like, whoa, that's a crazy eyeball. But you can kind of move it around. And maybe you have a crazy eyeball at octopus. Maybe that's your character. So there we go. Now. We've got the, the foil covered in clay, we've got eyeballs, and we've got the tentacles. At this point, I would let this sit overnight to cure, and then move to the tentacles tomorrow. Okay, so usually it's, I would recommend letting this cure fully, but we're just gonna kind of go ahead and you can, you can do that at home. So the next step, you've got the aluminum foil, We've put the twine on, we've covered in the blue, whatever magic model covering you want, and we've put some eyes on there. Magically, this thing is cured overnight. Uh, the only reason I recommend it curing is because this stuff loves to stick to itself. So it's just, if you don't have it cured, it's just going to be a little bit more tedious to put it together. But we're going to move on to the tentacles. I'm going to make two tentacles on this guy and show you how to do that. What you should do is just grab a nice glob of the blue, or of the modeling compound, sorry, whatever color you have. Go ahead and start kind of rolling it out. And I kind of like that for one of the tentacles. It's a little thicker up one end, a little thinner on the other end. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your piece of twine, you're gonna put the tentacle underneath it and push the twine in like this. You can just hold it there at the end then you're going to start to roll the foam or the compound modeling compound over the twine so you're encasing the twine inside the foam this will give it some support this will keep it from just ripping apart when you guys go to puppeteer it on your big fantastic underwater puppet shows there we go see how we're getting it in there and then squeezing it around I'm going to just have it end about there. Now, it's good to have some extra twine at the end, and I'll show you why in a little bit. But go ahead and go back now and cover the twine completely with the, the, with the modeling clay. There's going to be some little hairs from the twine that come out. That's okay. You can cut that off later. Don't worry about it for now. Just ignore it. Then you'll go in there. You'll reshape the modeling clay, smooth it out as you will. Now, when you're, when you're attaching it to the body, don't attach too much. I'm going to go back and kind of pinch a little bit around there because this is your, the joint for the tentacle to move like that. So you want to have some thick stuff over here, but you want to make this a little thinner so it can move. Then, once you've sculpted your tentacle, Kind of curl it around into a shape. Yep, and just kind of let it be. Or here, let's do this way. 
That's a good shape. You might want to shape some curves into it, maybe a little loop-de-loop, -loop, however you want to make these tentacles look. And they can be as long as as short as you want. It just depends on how long you cut that twine. So I'm going to grab another glob of the modeling compound, roll it around a little bit. Yeah, you know, very free and easy. Just kind of what, however you want it to be. And then go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to lay the twine into the clay and pinch the clay around it. Ideally, you want to get it in the center, but again, it doesn't need to be perfect. Go ahead and close it up. The first one's always harder, and then you get a feel for it as you go. It gets easier as you go. Again, I'm going to want to have a little extra twine sticking out, so I'm going to make that tentacle just a little bit shorter, squish it around, go back and reshape it, boom, 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 boom. and then I'm going to kind of curl it on the table into a nice shape. And then I'm going to go on to the next and you'll repeat this process all the way around till you get all the eight tentacles completed. So this is the octopus after all eight tentacles have been made. And again, there's some twine sticking out of each one. There's some curves in the tentacles, entirely what you want to do. At this point, if you've got some hairy bits of the twine coming out, you can go in and just cut them all away. Right, you can go over, here's one in here I don't like, go in there and cut it away, and cut it away. You can also keep them on the tentacle if your octopus happens to be a hairy octopus. I don't know, up to you. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a rubber band and a second dowel. We're going to roughly, very roughly find the middle of the dowel and pull the rubber band through. So you're gonna make a nice little knot with a rubber band like that. You don't need to pull it too tight, but you need to pull it tight enough that the dowel doesn't slide through. I'm not exactly in the middle, so at that point you can then just kind of roll this around to find where you think the middle is. At this point, you're gonna take a scissors and just cut the loop. So now you've got two pieces. Then you're gonna take this bit and somewhere towards the top of your dowel, the dowel that's in the octopus, you're gonna go ahead and tie this on. So we'll just take the rubber band, we'll tie a regular knot, pull it nice and tight. Now, I like to kind of wrap it around. See, I went under there and wrapped it around the, the knot, the first knot we made. It just kind of helps, you see how it helps stabilize the dowel? So all I did was wrap this. That's with it unwrapped. And then I went underneath, sorry my big hand got in the way, and over, and then I can tie this again. It's always good to tie at least two knots into things like this. So here's one. Tie it nice and tight. And then go ahead and tie another one. And, oh, yeah, knots are hard sometimes. There you go. So we have it up there. If you notice, it's also kind of like, here's the eyes of the octopus are here. If I go up straight, that's where the eyes of the octopus would be there. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move to this other string. I just happen to have, it's kind of a fancy fishing line for marionettes. Marionettes are puppets that work with strings. And so we're basically gonna be making a marionette here. You can use any kind of string here. You can use very thick sewing thread. You can use any kind of like white string that you find at the grocery store. Just a nice strong string. It'd be, it's, it'd be better if it's thinner than the twine, but entirely up to you. So the first thing we do is I tied the, dac the string to the twine. I'll show you how to do that. You'll take a piece of the string, cut it, you know, 
but that's at least long enough to get up to the control, right? Always cut yourself a little extra string. It just makes it easier to tie knots with in the future. Then I like to put the string like that. This is a little tedious, but you'll get the hang of it. And then tie a knot with that. So you'll pull it through and then you'll pull, oh, see, careful not to pull that bit. Pull both pieces of string through and then tie a nice little knot, sliding it back down towards the tip of the tentacle. Boom, like that. And then for extra security, you see how it's tied into the twine? For extra security, you can also tie a knot right there. One and two. Perfect. So go ahead and do this to all of your tentacles. I've done it to three right now. Now we're going to string the tentacles up to the control. You can do this as many different ways as you can think of. I'm just going to tie them straight up on one side. So let's start with this one. This one seems to be like the first tentacle on the face, if you will. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to hold this thing t um, parallel to the ground and I'm going to go ahead and tie it. So you see how I'm keeping this thing parallel to the ground. It's a 90 degree off of here. And then I'm going to go ahead and tie this thing. So I've pulled it up. I've tied the knot. Then I'll tie it on both sides. I'll go ahead and I'll do it again. Oops. Slowly and then I've tied a knot. So there we have a knot, and as this thing moves, the tentacle moves. Go ahead and leave this slack for now. We'll cut that all off later when you've made sure it's at the right spot you want. Then go ahead, and for me right now, I'm just going to see what it's like to tie them all on one side. So again, I'm going to tie another tentacle up. You don't want to tie it up all the way to the top because there's nowhere for it to go. So kind of midway up so you can see that it can move when the, when the control rod moves. Let's go ahead and secure this guy. It's a little hard with just, you know, you might want a helper at this point. Mom or dad, they're good helpers. Go ahead and tie another one. And boom, so there we go. I've got two on that side, and I'm gonna go ahead over here and tie this one up. Maybe just a little lower. And there we go. And if you find that you've tied these up and you don't like where you have them, you can untie them and put them where you want. This is entirely up to where you want to do it. But you're going to start to attach them all up to the top like this. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've tied all the tentacles up to the control rod up here. I'm going to go now at this point and just kind of cut off the extra bits I don't really want to look at too much. Blah, blah. Goodbye. See you later. Thanks for the help. Wonderful job. Nice knowing you. Smell you later. Sayonara. And adios. Okay, and then you can go ahead and you can do the same thing up at the top if you want. I'm just going to leave those that way for sure. Now, if you see, I put them all kind of like evenly spaced. And when I go to move it, it moves a little bit. It's not that great. But then I found out that if I squish them all to one point and one point there, they come alive a little bit more. All of this depends on how long or short these strings are. So you can play with this and change these lengths forever until you get this thing to move exactly how you want it. I'm happy with this for now because he's just a little goofy dancing um, octopus. So since I'm happy with where those pieces are, for me, for now, I'm going to take some tape and just go ahead and tape over the knots. It'll just help keep them from sliding around. 
So then you can go and perform. Oops. And last bit of tape up here. And there you have it, your very own octopus from the Pow Pow Fish. All right, that's all for today. But we hope you had fun, learned something new, and feel inspired to go out and get creative on your own today. Because remember, theater works anywhere. Anything is possible from any place you are. You can spend time with a friend, even if they're near or super far. Our ideas combine, we can go online with stories that we all can share. Because theater works anywhere. Theater works anywhere. Works anywhere.